My name is Xiaoming Wang. Uh, I'm a curator at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County. We find the fossil in a basin in southwestern Tibet called Zada Basin, and uh, is a is extremely southwestern corner of the Tibet at the foothill of the Himalayas. Among the woolly rhinos, we also find a Tibetan snow leopard and also a primitive species of Tibetan antelope, uh, as well as a blue sheep, which is actually a goat-like animal, uh, that also part of the Tibetan fauna. And also all kinds of creatures, uh, about 17 species in all. The woolly rhino fossil is, is special in two or three ways. One, it is uh, very primitive. It's actually the most primitive woolly rhino that we have found so far. Two, it is, uh, it is much earlier than other woolly rhino species that uh, are known so far, and therefore is probably ancestral to all of the other woolly rhinos. And third, it is from Tibet. And what that means is uh, it's probably adapted to a very special environment, namely uh, in a very cold and harsh environment where they have to go through very uh, harsh winter uh, and therefore be able to survive in the Arctic type of environment uh, in Tibet, where is, uh, is actually elsewhere, uh, outside of Tibet at the time in the Pliocene is much warmer. There's free of ice and there's no ice age at that time. And, and that's very special because uh, with that kind of woolly rhino that are adapted to the harsh Tibetan winters, um, they are therefore what we call pre-adapted to the environment during the ice age. In other words, when the ice age eventually came, uh, it, it was able to basically descend from Tibet and expand to the rest of the world. Well, mostly, uh, mostly the, the rest of the Eurasia. Uh, it didn't come to North America. Uri Rhino story uh, is one that um, indicating that uh, perhaps, uh, at, at least in the case of Uri Rhino, that uh, the Ice Age uh, fauna actually originated from Tibet. Uh, for other elements of Ice Age mammals, uh, we have indications, for example, of a relationship between the Tibetan yak, the long-haired cow-like animal that may actually uh, gave rise to the North American bison. Uh, another similar story is that the North American bighorn sheep may also come from Tibet. Uh, again, this is uh, evidence from, uh, uh, from the molecular evidence. Uh, the DNA sequence seems to suggest that the, uh, the bighorn sheep ultimately can be traced back to the, uh, the Tibetan agalai, which is a particular kind of bighorn, or sometimes it's called Macapolo sheep. Uh, so the uh, Tibetan plateau therefore seem to hold clues to several megafauna elements of uh, the Ice Age. Tibet uh, is one of the places that is poorly explored. Um, and therefore, like Arctic or Antarctic, um, is, uh, it has a great potential for new discoveries. Um, and therefore, uh, that's actually one of the reasons that we focus on Tibet. Uh, it, uh, just for lack of uh, research in that area, mostly because of the lack of physical access to it. Uh, difficult to drive, for example, it takes about seven days, literally. Uh, to drive within Tibet to arrive at Zada Basin. Uh, and therefore, it is actually quite a challenge to get there and then start working there.
We have been uh, working in Tibet for the last 13 years, since 1998. Uh, the challenge in Tibet is, of course, high altitude. Uh, working in altitude uh, is always uh, uh, you are short of breath. Physical exertion is that much more uh, for lack of oxygen. And also there are uh, physical challenges of really high mountains. Uh, we're talking about at the foothill of the Himalayas. Uh, and then constant uh, climbing up and down, uh, all of that. But it's a wonderful place to work in there. Uh, it's just a, it's a fabulous place. Uh, it's just a, really uh, one of the best places that I have ever worked in.